Welcome to the first of our weekly lectures. Every week I'll be taking a selected number of poems from our syllabus. This week it'll only be one, and using it to talk about one of the issues of the week. So today's poem will be a very familiar Robert Frost poem. But the issue that we're dealing with is the issue of reading a poem versus interpreting a poem. And the problem that we'll have is that both these words, reading and interpreting, have more than one meaning, and they both have uh, overlapping meanings. That is to say, sometimes to read and to interpret mean the same thing. And we'll never be able to completely separate the two ideas of reading versus interpreting. But we're going to, we're going to do our best to try to minimize that space where reading and interpreting overlap. So let's think about that. The word to read, we're going to think of as having two senses. And the one sense is going to be simply to do what a computer t could do. A computer that has the right program could give you back, word for word, the poem, but the computer doesn't understand the poem, or any text at all. A computer can read the words on the page, but a computer cannot understand the words on the page. So that's the simplest version of read, right, what a computer does. And the second version, the second reading that we're going to do is think about understanding the meaning of the sentences. As we've already seen, if we've read anything, as you've already seen, if you've read anything in this class so far, reading, uh, we'll put the sentence up here, what a computer does, uh, reading to understand the sentences, what the sentences say. And we're going to go through the poem three times to, to get this down, and reading to understand the poem. And that's a little bit different, right? Reading to understand the sentences is going to be different from reading to understand the poem. This last one is what we're going to call interpreting. So we're going to have two senses of reading and one sense of interpreting. Let's look at the actual poem. So this is a poem you may have, may have read in high school. You may have some passing familiarity with this poem. Let's talk about reading in the first sense. I'm just going to read the words from the beginning to the end without comment. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So you can all read the poem that way without any special training. You can read the words. The second level of reading is to read the poem to understand the sentences. We don't want to interpret the sentences. We just want to understand them. We might, in this reading, identify things that need to be interpreted, but we don't want to interpret them. So let me start again at the beginning. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. So what does that mean? Well, that's obvious, isn't it, that the speaker was walking through the woods. It doesn't say that anyone was walking through the woods. Maybe that's too much interpretation. In these woods, there were two roads that went in a different direction. And the woods were yellow. Yellow may be a place we need to interpret, but we're not going to interpret right now. 
and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So the speaker, now we know, was in those woods and he saw those roads diverge and he wishes he could travel both of them and still be one person. So he stands for a long time and looks down one of them as far as he can to see where it bent and it bent in the undergrowth. Presumably that's where he's not able to see it anymore. I don't think that's really interpreting, but we're really skating the line between reading and interpreting when we say that, but it's pretty obvious. So we have two roads. In the yellow wood, we have a walker, a person walking in the woods who sees both, wants to go down both of them, but still be one person. Second stanza. Then took the other as just as fair. So immediately, we, he looked down one as far as he can, then he looks at the other one and says, well, that was just as good. That word fair may be another word we have to interpret, but, but we know it has positive qualities, and right? he's not saying one is ugly. And having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. So one of them was just as good as the other, but one maybe was more attractive because it wasn't taken as often. Though as for that, the passing wear there had warned them really about the same. Well, on the other hand, Maybe that one wasn't any less traveled than the first one. Third stanza. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. So he's back to the idea that he started with. Two roads diverged and they're equal. No reason to take one or the other. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. So he leaves one. He can't take them both. So he decides, I won't take that one. I'll come back maybe someday and take that one, find out what's down that road. Today I'll go down this road. I'll probably never come back and see the other road. And we're just reading. No interpreting going on here. Very, very little. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. So now he's talking about the future. Someday he's going to tell this story. And when he does, he's going to sigh. Well, that's a third place that we might need to interpret, but we're not going to. We might want to find out why he's sighing or what that sigh means. And this is the story he'll tell in the future. Two roads diverged in a wood and I... I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. All right, so now we've read the poem in the first sense of the word, just going through the text. We've read the poem in the second sense of the word. We've understood all of the meaning of the superficial meaning of the sentences, what the words are saying. And now we're going to put it all together, and now we're going to come up with an interpretation of the poem. Now, the first two senses of the word, there's no, no question of doing it wrong, really. I mean, I suppose you could misread a poem by not understanding what the words mean. Uh, but the poem is written in sentences, like most poems, and the meaning of the sentences is, for the most part, pretty clear. We only have identified three places where the language might be a little bit ambiguous, might be in the ordinary sense open for interpretation. And those three sense, those three places were the yellow of yellow, yellow wood, the fair of just as fair, because it's not clear what that means, and the sigh. I don't see any other place in this poem where two people could, uh, could have different ideas of what the sentences mean. I mean, that's, the sentences are all very plain sentences, aren't they? All right, so now let's interpret. And we might find more places where we need to interpret than we found originally. 
So let's go back to the title, The Road Not Taken. And I think that raises an interpretive question. Which of the two roads is that title referring to? Is it referring to the road that people don't generally take? Or is it referring to the road he didn't take? Now, some people will say, well, that's up to the reader to interpret. But if the poem doesn't tell us, doesn't give us the information, how can we possibly interpret it? Right? Let's walk through the woods here and come to a fork in the road. And here is the road, he says, was had the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. And here's the first road that he looked down to where it bent in the undergrowth. Which is the road not taken? The one people don't usually take? Or the one he didn't take? Now, I would say we don't know. Or I would say it could refer to either of them unless you have a reason for believing it must be one and not the other, I don't think you can interpret beyond that. I don't think you can say it belongs to the one on the right or the one on the left, the first road or the second road. We don't know. Well, we're going to have to continue not to know unless the poem reveals it to us because the poem doesn't give any way out of that that's obvious to me. All right, so let's look for other things that need to be interpreted as we read. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. So what on earth is a yellow wood? Right. Well, I can think of a couple different things. One, it might be autumn and the leaves might be yellow, and so he's calling it a yellow wood, which would lead you to wonder, why is he talking about doing this in autumn? Or it could be just a very sunny day and the yellow sun is enlightening the woods. And that might make them yellow. Those seem to me the two most likely possibilities. And I don't know, uh, having read just this far, whether he means one or the other. But I don't mind. I don't mind not knowing that. I don't, it doesn't bother me any. Maybe he just wants to paint a picture. That's okay, too. So we'll just read on. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Well, there's an interesting moment. Of course, we can't go down two roads at the same time and be one person. Now, the idea of going down roads is a pretty common one in literature. It's a metaphor, usually a metaphor about life. We have choices. Maybe these roads are choices. Maybe I could be thinking of other ways that these are two roads. In fact, that leads me to wonder why he even used the word roads in the first line, because in the woods, you usually have paths. You rarely have roads. So maybe he used the word roads to help us think about whether this poem is about other things than paths in the woods, because poets usually want to use very precise languages. I don't know. I know that he's got to make a choice between two things, and he doesn't know which one to choose. I know that in my life or the lives of people I know, they come across these things all the time. Maybe you don't know if you want to marry Joanne or Sally. Maybe you don't know if you want to be an English major or a math major. Maybe you don't know if you want to go from NHTI to Plymouth or Keene. 
or college or work. Lots of things could be represented here that the poem doesn't mention directly. It just suggests. Well, if you're in that situation, you might want to, oh, if I go to Keene, maybe these options are available to me. If I go to Plymouth, maybe these options are available to me. I'm not going to go to both. So, so I'll map it out as well as I can. I'd like to go to both so that I would know perhaps which is the better, but I can't. So I looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair. Well, one seems to be as good as the other. Fair could mean good, could mean beautiful, um, could have a sense of justice. It's all, all positive things. Just as attractive, it may mean attractive. Then took the other as just as fair. And having perhaps, the perhaps seems to me important, having perhaps the better claim, not absolutely the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. So he's trying to find a reason to go here and not here. But he doesn't find it. He thinks he does for a second. Then he says, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. He started with the idea that they were equal, and he does not seem to be able to get past the idea that they are equal. And he says it explicitly in the third stanza, both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Well, if there's leaves on the ground, that leads me to suspect that the yellow refers to the leaves on the trees, and we're in autumn. I don't know if I need to interpret that anymore. I don't feel an overwhelming urge to do that, but maybe you do. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. That leads me to wonder about the difference between Plymouth and Keene, because if I choose to go to Plymouth, I'm probably not saying, well, maybe I'll go to Keene after I finish Plymouth. So that choice doesn't seem to fit in very well. But still, the idea of choices is here. So he still wants to go in both directions at once, but he can't, so he has to choose one. And on what basis does he choose? He doesn't seem to have any basis to choose. Maybe this one will be better. But really, I just have to, I can't go down both. I have to go down one. Now, I want you to notice a, another interesting fact about these first three stanzas. They all take place in the past. And they all take place in the past. This fourth stanza takes place in the future. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. I shall be telling this with a sigh have we figured out why he's sighing? Well, I want to talk about that some more, but I want to look at it. a few more words. Somewhere ages and ages hence. So someday in the future I'm going to tell this story, and I'm going to sigh when I do it, and this is the story I'm going to tell. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. Wait a second. I took the one less traveled by. Which one was less traveled by? Which one was less traveled by? Didn't he make it pretty clear that they were equal? Mm -hmm. They'd been worn really about the same. There was no significant difference between them. They, two, one was just as fair as the other. Three times 
he's told us that these paths were equal. And sometime in the future, he's going to say, I took the one less traveled by. Though there doesn't seem to be one that was less traveled by. And some people think, misremember the title of this poem as The Road Less Traveled, but that's not it. It's The Road Not Taken. And that has made all the difference. Well, we've got another moment of interpretation, I think, here. Has made all the difference. There's two ways to take that phrase, aren't there? We usually use it to suggest something, I did something, and it finally fixed the problem. Right? I, I couldn't turn the, the bolt and I finally put oil on it. I sprayed it with WD-40 and that made all the difference. Then I could turn the bolt. Positive thing happened. But if you think about just the words themselves, it doesn't say, they don't suggest improvement, they just suggest difference. Right? In other words, the one I took made everything different from the one I didn't take. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse. In fact, if you take this road, then you have no idea what would have happened if you had taken that road. So you can't say, my life is better because I took this road than it would have been if I hadn't taken that road. Because you can only know the road you take. So it did make everything different. It didn't necessarily make anything better. So why is he saying it made all the difference? Why is he saying he took the one less traveled by? Well, he's not saying that. He's telling us he will say that in the future. I suggest he already knows that someday he's going to lie about this. Someday when he tells this story, he's going to pretend or he's going to believe that he made the better choice. Right now, as he tells us, he's clear. Didn't make any difference. One was just as good as the other. But someday in the future, he's going to lie about it and decide that one was better than the other and this is the reason that it was better. Well, that's quite, quite different from what most people think about this poem. The normal interpretation, and one you've probably heard before, if you've ever heard about this poem, takes those last three lines of the poem, two roads diverged in a wooden eye, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference, and ignores the rest of the poem. Right? And if you ignore the rest of the poem, it might be telling us not to follow the crowd, to strike out on our own. But, if you take into account the rest of the poem, if you give a good interpretation of this poem, it's not saying that at all. So, let's get back to the sigh. Why does he sigh? Well, the sigh could mean a number of things. It could mean, for example, that some part of him will know that what he's saying isn't true. Or, and this isn't necessarily to exclude that, or he might be thinking, I wonder what would have happened if I'd gone down the other road. He might be thinking other things, too. Maybe you can think of other reasons why he would have sighed. Okay, so, just to recap, that's as far as I'm going to go here. Just to recap, we thought of the word read and the word interpret as meaning really three different things. To read like a computer reads, to read, to understand the sentences, and then the other word, to interpret, to mean to understand 
the meaning of the poem. It's the difference between what the poem says and I lost my thing here. What the poem says and what the poem means. Reading tells us what it says. Interpreting tell us, tells us what it means. So, uh, come back every week and we'll read one or two poems. I'll try to get these videos set by the beginning of the week, but if there's any poem you particularly want me to interpret or help you to read, let me know. Uh, good luck. <laughs>